What's up, guys? Um, Julian here with uh, Main Street Realtors and SearchSoCal.com. And I uh, just wanted to wish you guys all a, a happy Veterans Day. Um, you know, thank you to everybody that's served. And, uh, you know, for those that uh, have paid the ultimate price, you know, there's, um, you know, we just really appreciate all the service, service members out there, active and non-active. Um, and today uh, I, I have I brought on Scott here. He's a, a lender that I've worked with. Um, I think he's really amazing. And um, we're going to talk about the big news in real estate um, that's happened yesterday. Uh, big changes. And I think it's really going to um, change the, the outlook moving forward. This is the thing that we've kind of been waiting for to see what's going to happen. Um, a lot of speculation in the market. And I think this is just the beginning sign, but it's it's really big. So uh, brought Scott on because he's in this stuff every single day, looking at it and studying it. Um, and so hoping that he can kind of share with us uh, what's going on. But before you get started, I know we're kind of waiting for some, hopefully some folks to jump on here. Um, so tell me a little bit about who you are and, and what you do. What's up, everybody? So Scott Alejo with Change Mortgage. Thank you so much for the introduction, Julian. I uh, appreciate uh, working with you. Glad to be working with you and being able to partner with so many clients together. Um, but let's see, uh, to give you a little bit of a quick background about myself, I've been in the industry since 2003. That's right before the crash of 2008. Um, I used to be very proud of saying how long in the business I've been because I usually I used to be the young guy in the in the uh, on the table, but not so much anymore. It's been a handful of years now or 20 years now. Since I've been in the industry, so a lot has changed. So definitely bring in a lot of experience. And my background is I started from the bottom. I literally started off, started off as a receptionist, then became a junior processor, uh, then became a processor, and then became a loan officer. Uh, so it's a little bit of a journey there to get there, but I'm able to understand the internal process when it comes to what an underwriter looks for to determine if someone's going to get qualified or not, um, along with, you know, the sales skills and, uh, and knowing what programs are out there, what what best products will actually fit each person. Because I believe that every program has its pros and its cons. It's just yeah. a matter of figuring out which one's pro, which program is better for you. Yeah, and not to make this a sales pitch, but just yeah. just for y'all, you know, if, if you've got loan questions, you know, Scott's going to be coming on. We're going to try to do this more often. Um, probably even have some Q and A's hopefully uh, at some point. But you know, having worked with several, you know, we've done a, a, a bunch of deals together and just anytime I've ever sent him a client like the the amount of customer service that he has and the reason why I keep going back is you know that that he's so knowledgeable he's done everything from top to bottom um you know in the industry so when he look, takes your file and and we go into a a, a a transaction we put an offer in the 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 confidence that I have going in because I know that he knows how to digest what you have and what you have going on in your life and your finances you know, if he says we can do it, we can definitely do it. Um, and if he says we can't, then we'll find a way to make it happen somehow, some way. So yeah, it's been so. it's been really good. But uh, to the big news of what's yeah. happening, uh, fill us in on, on what just happened yesterday and what that means for, for right now, what happened. Yeah. So, let, let, I mean, let's talk about it, right? Yesterday was a great day within the mortgage-backed security market, which dictates what interest rates do is what banks determine to, you know, what kind of interest rates are able to offer. Um, so, you know, the reason why rates have increased this entire year is because inflation has been increasing and inflation, pretty much interest rates follow what inflation does as, as long as, as, as the same with, I guess, with everything else, right? Like gasoline and, and, and products, right? Um, they've gone up as well in price. So yesterday, the reason it was such a big deal is because yesterday, the, uh, what do you call it? The CPI report came in lower, inflation came in lower than expected, which, the bond market took off with this information because this is kind of like the first sign, I guess you could say, of things improving for the better when it comes to interest rates. It looks like there's still more savings, potential savings of yet to come. So a lot of good opportunities in getting a lower interest rate and not getting a higher rate that they are now. Like to give you an idea, since we're here talking about rates, right? The difference on rate on where we were two days ago versus where we were yesterday is about a half a percent. Depending on the program, depending on the in, sorry the uh, down payment and your FICO score, you could see a, a, a half a percent uh, improvement on the interest rate. Uh, to kind of give you like a ballpark idea on an FHA loan, you're looking somewhere between six percent and six point six two five percent 
depending again on your FICO score and down payment. And if you're looking at a conventional loan, somewhere between 6.375 up to 7.125%, because again, the difference in the down payment and um, and your FICO score as well. But uh, definitely some great information. Uh, any questions on that, Julian? Does that make sense? Did I clear myself? Did I miss any points? Um, I don't think so. I think uh, for CPIs, the consumer price index, that's kind of exactly. what we monitor kind of helps one of the things that helps us track uh inflation absolutely so you know the 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 federal reserve has been raising interest rates to help fight inflation correct that's the number they were kind of watching and it, and it, it had kind of held steady right for since for the last six months they kind of got it to hold steady but it wasn't going down well, to be honest with you it wasn't that they were holding it steady it just kept going up that's why yeah. they were doing stuff such high uh uh Fed, uh, Fed right increases, right, of, of 75 bips, right, or 75.75. Right. Um, but this was our first time of it actually, like, turning down versus continuing the way up. Now, yeah, okay. it, we may not still be in the clear, right? Uh, it's it's definitely going to be a bumpy road for the next, you know, three to six months. But uh, it's going to at least start to point in the direction that we want it to go, and that's rates improving, right? Inflation, as inflation starts to drop, so will interest rates. So, uh, hopefully, I knock on wood as I say this, that this is just the beginning and the start and the next federal rate hike that, that is due in December gives some more improvements to this because it looks like the, the signs are starting to point in the right direction. Okay. So the, the next time they're going to revisit it, it's in December. Correct. Um, and then depending on what that does in December, we'll potentially uh, yeah, I think they do. They, I think based on what we've been hearing and reading and seeing on what's been reported, uh, the, it looks like they're going to they're planning on increasing by another 0.75. Right. Um, there's been talks about 0.50, which won't be. I mean, it's kind of like definitely where they do something like this. It just isn't, doesn't mean that's positive across the board. There's other areas in the economy. It affects it negatively. So they're still, they're still trying to like tread on water. Right. Or walk on eggshells to try to kind of get it right. But it seems like they're going to do another 0.75 in December, which should also help. Uh, cool inflation, which will then also directly affect interest rates dropping. Okay, gotcha. Um, <clears throat> I know we were gonna we're gonna talk about it next week, but one of the things if 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 you're watching this video next week, we're gonna have Scott back, and we are going to talk about um, you know with interest rates having gone up a lot, there was a lot of talk about a two one buy down um, program, and Scott did a very good training the other day that I saw, so. I said, hey, you want, why don't we come do another video together and you can kind of walk through what you did. So if your you know, interest rates coming back down a little bit is good, they probably will continue to hopefully come back down a little bit more into uh, the middle of next year at some point. It's kind of what we're hoping. But until then, this is a good sign, too, because we've got that program that could potentially save you some money up front until interest rates go down, if that's what you're looking to do. Yeah, and rates going down is going to open up a lot more opportunities for people, right? Like you just mentioned the 2-1 buy-down program, right? Just to kind of give you a, a, a quick idea of what this is. And let's just say, for example, today you did an FHA loan and your rates are 6%. 6%. With the 2-1 buy-down, that means that the first year of the loan, it's going to drop by 2%. And instead of paying a monthly payment on 6%, now you're making a monthly payment on 4% for the first year. And then the second year it adjusts to 5%, right? And then when that year ends, then it adjusts to the full 6% that you started off everything at. Now, it may seem risky, right? Because you're thinking, wow, I don't want my payment to change. I don't want to pay a higher payment down the road. The, the strategy behind doing a program like this is understanding that since rates are projected to drop in the next 12 to 24 months overall, then this, this would be a good window for you to say, okay, well, let me get the lowest payment possible right now and then turn around and refinance in two years and still keep a low payment. So that's the strategy behind that, especially with where rates are and how payments are and where sales prices are. Um, if you do if you do an FHA or a um, VA loan, uh, how soon are you able to refinance after you've gotten it? So uh, FHA, VA, I think even conventional has this rule. I'd have to double check conventional, uh, but don't quote me on the conventional side. But for sure, FHA has a rule that you would have to at least wait one year in order to use the new appraised value of your home, right? So meaning, let's just say, for example, you purchase a home today and in six months, the interest rate is lower and you want to take advantage of refinancing. You still could. There's just... 
got to make sure that there's enough equity to either you pay the cost out of pocket or built in the cost into the loan so that you don't pay money out of, out of pocket. Or you just wait for the full year and then you can definitely include all that cost into the uh, into the loan itself and, and bring on that new value. Um, or you wait and continue to wait even further down and wait 24 months. But as far as like being forced or if there's pressure down the road, you can refinance the moment it makes sense. In six months, in a year, in 24 months, whatever that is for you, um, you can definitely refinance because there's no prepaid penalty. There's no like early payoff penalty that you would have to pay for refinancing. There's another stat that I, you know, I mean, stats are nice because they help guide us in the in the now, right? Uh, his, historical data, I should say. Um, the last six recessions that we've gone that we've been in, uh, all the way dating back all the way to 1980, interest rates from the start of the recession to the end of and end of the recession have gone down. Yeah. So that's why it's got you know we talk about you know the two one buy down and the reason the two years makes sense because Absolutely. you know typically a uh, recession is about 18 months on, on on average. Now you know some would say we started a recession in July. But some are saying we haven't. So either way, we're probably about two years between now and and what they would say that we're out of the recession or sooner. Um, and yeah. so that's where the the two one buy down can potentially benefit you saving some money. But at the end of the day, like he said, I mean, you, you when you get that, it's different than because people hear variable rates and they think back to 2008 and all of these loans that everybody had. And there's a lot of fear in that. But the difference with this two one is you're actually qualifying at the current interest right. rates today and, and you otherwise up, you can't get it you brought up a great point julian let's let's talk about that part right like let's just say you know maybe my credit's not so excellent or my job you know my job can be from place to place because i work at a temp agency and my credit's not so hot maybe a two one buy down is not the choice that you want to proceed forward with and just do a regular rate buy down the same proceeds you would use, utilize from the seller to help accomplish the 2-1 buy-down, if you turn around and use those proceeds just to effectively buy down the interest rate on the loan, meaning it's an extra cost to get that loan, that loan from the lender, and it's fixed for the entire period. It may not be as low as the first year of the 2-1 buy-down, but it will be as low as the second year, avoiding the third year completely. So now you're in a position that, hey, you refinance once you're ready to refinance and that moment makes sense for you so either option is definitely a fantastic option to take advantage of but one of the things i wanted to mention with there being lower rates that means down payment assistance programs come back in a bigger way because rates have been either not available or just too high to where it makes sense so those are going to slowly start coming back right um lower payments more full affordability it's definitely going to open a lot more opportunities for buyers to get into something. And there's going to be that window, right, Julian, we talked about that if the rate gets so low enough that the demand really, truly increases right now, what are we getting in today's market, Julian? If you're a buyer trying to buy a house, what can you expect from the seller as contributions to purchasing a home? Right now, I mean, there's that's a great question. I mean, for, for one, like if you're a VA buyer, you can literally get into a house with zero money out of pocket because right now with the the, the 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 lack of demand that's happening, sellers are definitely negotiating and you can get a lot of money towards your closing costs with on a VA loan with 0% down. You still have closing costs. You could potentially get those covered. So if you're a veteran, you know, this is something definitely a time for you to maybe consider buying. And then even if you're FHA conventional, you're definitely being able to get a, a better price, get a, get money towards your closing costs. You can get money towards repairs. You know, uh, six months ago, you you had to buy a house as is, no questions asked. To just take my offer, please. And so right now, and there's a lot of negotiation, market value, right? And pay above. And <clears throat> to that point, right? Like right now, interest rates are a little high, higher. When you had to go and pay fifty thousand dollars over ask or a hundred thousand dollars over ask, that was money out of your pocket, out of your bank account, and there's no deductions on that right now you're paying a higher interest rate technically yeah you're going to pay more for the monthly payment but you get more tax deductions out of that money off of your income too which can save you some money on income um as well and you're not out of that money um from your pocket no no let me ask you julian you, you mentioned something perfectly there right you said that the demand is low because interest rates are higher so when interest rates come down let's just say they make it to the fives 
what will that do to demand? Well, I can tell you this right now, um, inventory is still low historically. I mean, we're not as definitely as low as we were, but we're still in the two months of inventory levels, which is definitely what they would call a seller's market. You know, it's changing, you know, it's going up, you know, I think we're going to plateau, but like you said, there is lack of, of the demand is definitely down, which gives you more opportunities. Interest rates come down. There's going to be more demand and you're going to have a harder time getting it. And then let me um, ask you, and if the demand goes up, what is typically the first thing that's going to go away on offers? Leverage. Yes. But what will be the first assistance that goes away? Will, will, will closing costs still be a possibility or do you think that would be something very difficult to acquire again? It'll be a lot hard. It'll be a lot harder to get closing costs. Those things. Yeah. 100%. So we say that to you, right? Because ultimately if yes, we don't want the higher interest rates. Everybody wants a lower interest rate and we totally understand that. But now take a look at the circumstances that we're in. We're in a, we're in a position right now for a buyer where they're paying extra. The seller's paying money to buy down your interest rate, okay, and or closing costs, and is completing repairs, okay. Now you're able to refinance when the rates improve, as opposed to if you wait into until the rates completely drop and you purchase at that point. Now you're not going to get the same incentives as before, and now. You're going to have to compete with others. So instead of looking to save you money, you could put yourself in a position that you're going to end up paying more for waiting. And that's ultimately what you want to compare. At the end of the day, what matters most is can you afford the mortgage payment, right? That's no matter what the rate is, what the sales price is, can you make the mortgage payment? And that is going to be your initial highest mortgage payment of the loan as long as you never refinance. There's going to be multiple opportunities for you to refinance in the future and lower your monthly payment by getting a better interest rate and by eliminating a mortgage mortgage insurance for those people who are having to put the lowest down payment possible and that requires mortgage insurance. So as that time passes, Julian, as time passes, will values continue to appreciate or will values continue to depreciate? What would you say safely? In the next five to 10 years, will houses be worth more today? I'm sorry, will be more then than they are today or worth less than they are today? They're going to be worth more. And and I'll, we'll, we'll close at this because this is something that I've thought a lot about. Um, you know, we always know a good deal today is going to be a great deal in 20 years, right? You're going to look back. That's always the case. It has been the case forever um, as long as we've been tracking home prices and, and everything. But, you know, since 2000, I got in the business in 2016. OK, in 2017, 18, it was 10 years since we had the crash. People are saying, hey, you know what? The market's going to crash. I'm going to wait. Then 2020 comes around. Uh, we've got a pandemic. I'm going to wait. I don't know what's going to happen. Then 2021 comes around. It's too competitive. I can't get my offer. I can't <coughs> I can't pay. I don't want to pay out of pocket all that money. Like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for it to crash. 2022 interest rates are going through the roof. You know, they're going higher. Um, I, I'm going to wait. The point is, there's no perfect time to buy a house other than when you're ready when the time when you decide that like for your family or you're moving job transfers whatever that's the time that you need to buy um but to, to scott's point inventory is low now still but we have a lot less demand you can get into a house with um and, and get a lot of money paid back to you and closing costs buying down your rate and then you know refinancing at some point in the future uh but all of the big financial eco econo uh, economists right now are saying, you know, we're, we're in a deceleration market. We're not in a declining market. So, you know, over the next four to five years, they're still anticipating um, growth in the market. It's not going to be a 14%, 20% year over year, but more of the average two to three, four percent uh, gains that we've always historically seen. Um, and if that's the case, I mean, like he said, when interest rates come down, there's going to be more demand. Right now, you have a great opportunity to get into a home, um, get a good price on the home because sellers are are wanting to to get out with as much money as they can. And it's one of those negotiations that you can really uh, potentially leverage and, and get yourself a really great home at a great price. You have more opportunity to, to, to look around what's on the market right now because when interest rates come down, it's going to be harder to get what you want. Um, it's going to be harder to get a deal um, and, and prices are projected to go up and we're seeing inflation coming back the other way. 
a little bit and that's going to bring down the price the, the interest rates and, and increase that demand so um might be a great time to get into a house before christmas and give yourself a really nice christmas present absolutely but that being said uh scott i appreciate you coming on and uh, we will do this again next week we're going to go in depth and show you actual figures and what you could actually save uh with the two one buy down and how much it would be if you just bought it um bought down the rate you know for the 30 year fixed and uh yeah cool awesome guys well thank you everybody that attended and watched this video appreciate the time feel free to reach out to either one of us with any additional questions or specific scenarios or just general questions and we'll be here to answer them Absolutely. I appreciate it, uh, Scott, and we'll see you hopefully next week. All right, anybody have any questions, leave a comment in below. If you're watching this at a later time, we'll come back and answer anything that you have uh, about anything. So talk to you soon. All righty.